In this video, I'm going to show you scanned pages of a 1997 unproduced Star Wars toy booklet that came with this Tom Art Star Wars Collectibles price guide. So go ahead and pause the video if you want to read the intro to the three and three quarter inch figures. And the infamous rocket firing Boba Fett choking hazard missile. A lot of people know the story, but this is what the caption says. On the left, he looks a little bit different because it's an original handmade prototype. The center yellow ones are first shot productions, and similar examples have been found with green limbs. And I've had Alien vs. Predator prototypes, and it's true that they use just whatever injection molded color they have. And on the right, around 2,500 unpainted Boba Fett figures were produced for testing with the Reverse L launcher. And here's where the big problem came in. When a similar missile misfired on a competitor's product and led to a child choking, lawyers for Kenner warned against production. I have original card backs that I'll show in another video that have a sticker on top of the promotion because this rocket firing Boba Fett was going to be a mail away. So they tried 40 J hook versions, which were produced in the Orient. This design would prevent misfiring, but unfortunately failed other safety tests. So that's the real story. I found this group of nine prototypes on the internet, so I don't know who to give credit to, but it's pretty cool to see all of them in one photo. Here's a close-up from the Star Wars Collector's Archive. On this two-page spread on the left, we have production Chewbacca and mock-ups of figures proposed for the 1978 Star Wars Holiday Special. Rejected figures shown here were members of Chewbacca's family. In the middle, it shows mood-changing colored C-3PO figures. They were turned down because color changing didn't happen in the film. And Gargan, the six-breasted dancer from Jabba's palace, never made it past the prototype stage. I think we can see why. So here we have first versions of the power droid and R5-D4. Starwing Han Solo was rejected because Lucasfilm wanted to maintain film continuity. However, they did produce the Imperial Troop Transporter, which was not in the movies, and it's a pretty nice piece. You can see the Imperial Troop Transporter record player fix in one of my videos. And the alternate prototypes of an Ewok indicate that one piece design was contemplated for the head and torso. Dark Stormtroopers from the Star Wars newspaper comic strip were rejected by Lucasfilm. To his right is an early prototype of the Death Star droid built on C-3PO's body. It was used in a German catalog. At the bottom we have a hand-painted Greedo prototype. And Blue Snaggletooth, which is in some of my other videos. Caption says his production figure is shorter because injection molded plastic shrinks as it cools. And the red cloaked Bib Fortuna was used in some catalog photography, but the production version was tan. So what we have at the top of this page is kind of interesting. Not really the figures, but two up prototypes. It says two ups increase in size volumetrically because they're used for tooling when figures are very intricate. And below with the Royal Guard and the TIE Fighter pilot, they have metallic accents, but they were tested unsuccessfully because kids wanted the appearance from the film. To the right of it, it says Kenner's light pipe mechanism was also invented at this time for use on the original Jawas, but was not used until the Super Powers collection, which I guess is what these three prototype figures are for. At the bottom, it's what they're called Vendor Supplied Prototypes, or VSPs, of Lando and Skiffguard disguise. What this was used for was some photography, but it was a mistake rather than a true variation. Then they have three variations on the trench coat for Han Solo. On the right page, unproduced droids figures. If you have interest in those, you can pause it and take a look at it, but I don't have any interest in them. At the bottom were unproduced figures for the Ewoks line. And on this page, the same could be said for the droids animated series figures. Below that are Creatures, an early prototype of the Dewback, and Jabba the Hutt was originally planned as a Rotocast figure. It says here this hollow baby doll type material would have given the figure a more reptilian feel. Which really I think they meant slug like because that's what Jabba the Hutt is. But it was abandoned in favor of injection molded plastic. And this head casting shows a lot of extraneous plastic which would have been trimmed off. The top two unproduced Power of the Force carrying case concepts for both coins and corresponding figures. Below that is artwork for an unproduced Power of the Force vinyl carrying case. I have the original Star Wars and Empire Strikes Back ones. 
and a gold vac metalized Darth Vader storage case. I had the original black plastic Vader, but I sold it. Finally at the bottom, various prototype or vendor supplied prototypes, storage cases for the three and three quarter inch Star Wars figures. From what I can remember, the story goes that, of course, the Vader one had already been produced in black. So when it came time to try a C-3PO version, they did a test by metalizing the Vader version. On the right side, it says packaging for all types of unproduced products were created and proofed many times. And believe me, having done this, they're not lying. And a lot of these back then were done with marker renderings. And the six-pack at the top, which we're used to seeing now, was for Revenge of the Jedi. That was the title before George Lucas changed it to Return of the Jedi, of course. The bottom of the page is the droids and Ewoks package mock-ups. And graphic designers call them comps or comprehensive layouts. And as is pretty common for trade shows, these were made for a toy fair display and included prototype versions of the appropriate collector's coins that went along with them. Two of the most popular Power of the Force cards which were not used included the U.S. versions of Boba Fett and the infamous Yak Face, neither of which were sold in this country. So Yak Face is worth a lot of money. On this left-hand page are one-of-a-kind logo designs tested for Revenge of the Jedi. And these are graphic designers brainstorming, but really, I don't like any of these. On the right, logo designs for the trilogy packaging concept, which eventually became the Power of the Force line. And the text reads, the amount of work that goes into package design is seldom given a second thought by anyone who hasn't been involved in the process. But like I said, believe me, I have been involved in the process. Probably there's more than one person that worked on these. And again, it's brainstorming. It may look like they don't know what they really want. And in some cases, you don't know what somebody really wants until they see it and they tell you. So for The Return of the Jedi, when it was named that, kind of went back to step one to determine if a new approach was warranted. So many designs were tested with focus groups, but it confirmed that the packaging should just continue along the same lines as those used for previous films. And I'm glad they did that. But some minor tweaks that came out of these mock-ups were added to the Jedi packaging to freshen the look for a new line. Other unproduced toys videos will be added to the playlist. You can also check out other popular videos on my channel. May the force be with you and please subscribe for more.